Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today I'll be going over Nikon's new mirrorless crop sensor, the Z30, and its kit lens, the 16 to 50. Let's get started. The Nikon Z30 is a crop sensor mirrorless camera with a 21 megapixel sensor, has 209 focus points, and has an 11 frames per second continuous drive. Where it lacks in a viewfinder and pop-up flash, it features a fully articulating touch LCD screen, shoots 4K video up to 30 frames as well as slow motion video in HD, has a microphone port, and built-in Wi-Fi to use with the Nikon SnapBridge app. Today we will go over the buttons, doors, and menus of this camera and its features. So, yes, I know this is the Z30 and not the Z9 as much as a lot of you probably want to see it. The Z9 is still in a major back order, so I probably won't see it for a while. But this guy did just come out. We did get some extras in stock, so decided to give you guys a walkthrough on something because you haven't seen one of those in a while. So introducing the Z30. Really the only difference between this camera and the Z50 is this one doesn't have a viewfinder and this one has the fully articulating screen rather than a flip screen that goes all the way down. Um, otherwise the sensor, the processor, the, I mean everything on it is pretty much going to be the same. So it's just a matter of, you know, there are some people that do not like to take pictures with the viewfinder. It bothers their eyes, they don't like it. Um, especially if you're a vlogger, somebody that does um, quite a bit of video, or you're getting into video and you're looking for a travel size option, this would be a great option for you. I found this very easy to use. My number one gripe, um, <laughs> which has been very similar with some of the other Nikon cameras, specifically, and we'll go over the back of this camera more in detail, was in order to do the video clips, I had to switch back and forth to do so. I, I personally am a big fan of setting what I want my video to be, and if I'm in a jam, I can just click the red button in a picture taking mode, and it'll start recording video. But that is just my own preference. This may not bother some people. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start going over this camera here, start going over the front as usual. So this is the kit lens here. It is a 16 to 50 lens. Great way to start. This does come in a two lens kit. Um, so when you first get it, it's going to be completely closed up just like this. And um, all you have to do is turn it from this dot to the 16. It does take a little bit of Force, not much, uh, but you know, it's not gonna just do it on its own. So you do have to give it a little bit of push and then it'll lock itself into place. Um, and then to put it back to the dot, you just use a little bit of force there, puts it back to the dot to close it up completely when you're putting it away. But in order to use the camera and take pictures with this lens, you do have to turn it to the 16 at least and it does zoom to the 50 mark. To remove the lens and change the lens, you have your big button here above the Z30 symbol, which you're going to hold the button down, turn the lens, and it comes right off. And of course, to put that lens back on there, you'll see the white dot on the lens and the white dot on the camera here. You'll put, line those two up, turn and snap. Pretty easy. Then on the inside of the grip here you see we have fn1 fn2 your fn buttons are going to be your function buttons or your shortcut buttons so if we turn the camera on this is right out of the box i haven't adjusted any of these custom buttons here it looks like fn1 is going to control your white balance out of the box and your fn2 no it's meant to change your focus mode uh, which we'll go over those and what those are here in a moment when we go over the back of the camera i'm gonna take the opportunity to let our switch up the lcd screen going over the sides of the camera here here you can see 
we have a huge amount of nothing. So nice, plain and simple on this side of the camera. On this side of the camera here, we have a couple of doors. So if we lift up this door here, it's going to lift this whole piece up, which will then display the HDMI port to uh, show your display on an external monitor. You can hook, up, hook it up to your television set and show videos and pictures you've taken pictures of throughout the day if you're showing to a big group, something like that. And then we have the USB-C port, which is a USB port. This is gonna be for updating your firmware. This is gonna be for transferring pictures from the camera to your computer if you don't choose to use a SD card reader. Um, but it's also going to be for charging the battery in the camera itself, which is great if you're on the go and traveling versus trying to find an AC plug somewhere to plug your external charger in uh, to get a charge on your backup battery. That way you can take like a little travel battery with you, plug your camera in on the go, keep it charged as you go, which is always a great feature in my book. Then we have a door above it here labeled MIC, which of course is mic. And that is going to be to have an external audio source here. Um, and you can hook your maybe like a shotgun mic to the top. You can have a lav mic. You do have built-in mics built in on this camera here. These are the speakers here. Here is your microphone. So it's just this little microphone here um, that's taking in all of the audio from all around you versus if you wanted to get your audio from someone specific or in a specific direction, um, you can ex hook up an external microphone to this camera and achieve that. Going to the bottom of the camera here, we have one door which does house our, get this open, there we go, which houses our battery here, which you just let go with this little yellow tab, comes right out, as well as um, a slot where the SD card goes. As you can see that by this little symbol here, there's gonna be a square with a corner cut off, very similar to an SD card, just showing you which direction to put the card into with the little arrow there, um, just so you are aware. If we go to the top of the camera here, go ahead and go over some of these settings. What I love about the Nikon mirrorless system in comparison to the Nikon DSLR is I, me personally, I could never, I could never settle in on the Nikon DSLR because there were just so many buttons and settings on the outside. And I love this because it's just so simple. It's easy to work with. And for me, simple is just better. It's, it's easier, it's faster that you know, they have the right idea going forward. And so I really love the overlay of their mirrorless cameras, very similar to what we're seeing here. So we did go over the mic. We went over the speakers here, your left and right speakers. This, as well as holding on to a microphone or a receiver for a lav mic, can also be used for an external flash. So while this doesn't have a pop-up flash like the Z50 does, you can use an external flash on this, which do typically tend to be better anyhow um, when it comes to having any external light that is a uh, strobe on camera. Then we have our mode dial here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start on auto. So where this line ends up showing is the setting that you have it on. Out of the box, it should be set to auto, which if you're just getting into this camera or photography in general, auto may be what you're going to stay on for a little bit and that's okay. Auto is letting the camera do all of the thinking for you um, when it comes to your settings, light intake, speed, all of that, it's going, I know what you want, let me get the shot for you. Which, if you're just starting out and you're learning about what shutter speed and aperture and ISO have to offer, then this is a great mode to be in. Now, if you've ever shot on auto before or while you're taking pictures in auto, you may discover that when you go to take a picture and you look, you go, but that's not how I wanted it to come out. And the camera thinks, no, that's how you wanted it to come out. And sometimes we just know better as the photographer. That's what these modes here are going to be for. Your P, your A, your S, your M. So P mode, program auto, is gonna be your first step off of automatic. This is going to allow you to change certain settings like shutter speed or aperture to a limit. 
Um, it allows you to change your focus settings. It allows you to change uh, where you want to focus, you know, that type of thing. It has a little bit more customization, but the camera will decide on everything else uh, despite things that you may not change and help you along the way. So it gives you a little bit of freedom to start playing with those manual options of telling the camera what you want out of the photo. The S mode is going to be your shutter speed mode. That's how fast it takes the picture. So if you're trying to freeze motion or show motion as your goal, you'll be able to tell the camera that you want it to take pictures faster or slower while the camera indicates or the camera decides how much light it wants to let in versus the aperture, which controls the light intake that I was just referring to, you can tell it to let more or less light in. And that might sound pretty obvious, like, oh, more light if I'm in a lower light situation. But the aperture, depending on the lens that you have on it, will also allow you to control depth of field. So that nice blurry background, sharp foreground effect. So you would use this with portraiture, you can use this with landscape to get sharpness throughout your image, that type of thing, while well, the camera indicate or the camera chooses what speed it wants. So P, A, and S are very easy to use and easy to practice with when learning these very important tools on how to control your pictures versus M, manual, that very scary mode that uh, most photographers are afraid to touch at least beginners and that's okay manual you're doing all of the deciding the camera's only doing what you tell it to so the manual mode can be very daunting to those with a camera don't feel the pressure that you need to shoot on manual to be a photographer use your p a and s modes depending on your goal and then use manual to dial in those perfect settings that you're getting from here. And once you learn your shutter speed, your aperture numbers, your ISO and all of that, manual will be better to understand, but don't just jump into manual because you'll throw this away like last week's leftovers. It's, it's you know, you're just not going to enjoy it. And that's the important thing here when you get a camera is that you enjoy using it. Um, you have here also U3, U2, U1. No, we're not discussing the band. Um, <laughs> U is for user. This, having a user one, user two, and user three mode allows you to pick very specific settings for certain situations and save them to these modes here to come back to them later. So say you're in a situation like this where I have artificial lighting and something I'm taking pictures of or video of. And I found the perfect settings that I want, the perfect depth of field, um, the amount of light, all of that. Um, I found the perfect settings that I want each and every time I use this setup and the lighting's not gonna change. So I can save it to U1, U2, or U3. And then maybe I go for a walk with Roxy down the park and I put it to auto P, maybe even shutter speed mode to capture her running or something like that. But then I come back to this setting and go, oh shoot, I don't remember those settings. They were perfect. All you have to do is U1, U2, or U3, depending on where you save it to. So that is what those modes are for here as well, which is for very user specific, you know, uh, settings. Um, you may not use those and that's okay, but that's what they're there for, just in case. Um, also, we're gonna go ahead and go over the rest of the camera in the P mode, because when, once we reach the menu um, options, they're very limited in auto versus P. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it in P mode going forward um, when we approach the menu system. The red button here is, as stated before, going to start and stop your video, but you do need to have this tab here in the video camera mode. Uh, that is very important or else this red button doesn't do anything in the camera mode. So something to keep in mind. You also have an ISO button. This is your image sensitivity to light. Um, that if you're just beginning, photography is gonna be a little bit foreign for you to understand. Um, it takes some practice 
and, and it's much easier to understand with a mirrorless camera because it kind of shows you, but it allows you to make the camera a little bit more sensitive to low light. Um, but the higher you make that number, the less clarity and sharpness you tend to get. And it tends to get more fuzzy and distorted. So it's important that you don't just go to the highest number like 12,800 and rather set a limit for this camera between 100 and 6,400, which tend to be very, very safe on this camera in my uh, personal use of it. Uh, which we'll go over when we reach the menu system as well. The plus and minus button allow you to make your picture brighter or darker before you take the shot. So the digital cameras are made to recognize 18% gray as the perfect lighting. So this mat here is actually 18% gray uh, just to try and keep my background as balanced as possible. When the camera recognizes 18% gray, it goes, that, that's the perfectly lit photo. So you may notice that when I have the camera on, if you have my recording camera on my black Nikon here, that it's actually going to lighten everything up and try its best to make this gray versus I have very light skin. So if I decide to move the camera and put my skin into place, my skin's not as white as it was with the camera in the center here, if I kind of move that. So my skin lit up quite a bit versus if I move the camera, it's now getting darker to try and pick up all of my freckles and skin tones in my hand. So it's adjusting itself to be that 18% gray that it needs to be. But say I didn't want this black camera to show up gray. Maybe I would like it to actually be the black camera that it is. You would use this setting and go minus and take it down a couple of stops for it to actually be a little bit darker and adjust it accordingly so it's correct. Same thing were to go if, say, you were to take pictures in the snow. It's gonna turn that white snow 18% gray because that's what it thinks it needs to be. So you would use this button here and you would go plus numbers and make the whole scene a little bit brighter in order to correct that. So this is called your exposure compensation. So it helps you compensate those exposure changes in those environments. So you can understand what that does. And this here is actually gonna be one of your adjustment knobs. So if you are in P, A, S, or M mode, it's going to change your shutter speed or aperture, or you know, depending on the setting you're on, um, it'll change different things. And if we go to the back of the camera here, so this top button here, you'll see a little timer um, here, as well as multiple squares stacked on top of each other. This is going to be your drive and timer mode. So if I hold this button down and I use my wheel here, we have single frame, which when you click and hold that shutter button down is going to take one picture at a time. You have low continuous, high continuous and high extended continuous, which all of these are going to take continuous shots if you want it slower or faster, uh, depending on how quick you want it to take those pictures, all you have to do is click and hold that shutter button down. It'll continually take pictures um, as whatever is in front of you is moving or um, whatever you're trying to capture. And then you have, whoop, and then you have your timer mode as well for long exposure, for, for like a group picture or something like that, uh, you have your self timer there as well. You have your trash can button for when you use your play mode here. Now, currently I don't have a memory card, but if I did and I took some pictures and I hit my playback button here, I would be looking through pictures that I've already taken and then you can use your trash can button to delete photos that didn't come out. Then your universal escape button is your shutter button halfway down that does bring you back to the shooting screen. Again, we have photography, 
and video here. With video, you can see that we have the microphone levels, we have your settings for video um, versus the camera here is going to be definitely more photography based settings like raw photography and JPEG. Now the menu systems do uh, tend to differ a little bit um, and we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that here in a minute. The DISP button is going to change your display. So depending on the appearance that you like, personally, I like to have the busier one because I can kind of see what my exact settings are, I see my battery mode, what my metering mode is, my settings popped up down here. Um, in this little box here where you see the E is where how many pictures you have left on your memory card because I don't have one in there. There's nothing in that box, but just so you're aware. Um, the A-E-L-A-F-L button is your auto exposure lock or your auto focus lock button. So you can lock in your exposure, your light, um, or your focus, depending on what you have it set to. The I button, your information button, is gonna be your quick menu. This is my favorite feature of every mirrorless camera because it's so easy. Um, and you can customize this fully, but out of the box, this is what you get. So. In your quick menu, it gives you everything that you may want to access on a regular basis. So the first one here is your set picture control. This is going to control the uh, color output of the image. So I would just keep it on auto, but they have monochrome like black and white, more vivid, ones designed for portrait or landscape, that type of thing. Your image quality, so raw, JPEG, raw and JPEG, you know, um, depends on what you want to do. Um, I like just taking pictures in RAW for these photos so I can try and get the most out of each photo for you when it comes to the samples. The flash mode, which of course is not going to do anything unless you have an external flash on the top of this. Wi-Fi connection, so you can connect to the SnapBridge app. You can transfer pictures, use your phone as a remote control the release mode or your drive mode, which is also this button here. You have your autofocus area mode, where you would like it to focus. If you want to focus on a human face, uh, directly in the center, have it automatically pick for you, which is usually front, front focus. It just depends on how you want, where you want it to focus at. You have your white balance, which will affect the warmth or coolness of your image. I personally just keep it on automatic. These cameras are usually really good about depicting what the color temperature should be. So you have your metering mode, which is going to be where it takes the light from. So on this mode here, you can see a matrix metering. It's considering the entire image and finding a balance. You have center weighted, which is going to take more directly in the center-ish of the photo, not pinpoint, but uh, center weighted, like it says, um, rather than the entire picture. Then you have spot metering, which is where this auto exposure lock really comes into play, where it takes just the center spot in the middle. You can point it to wherever you want. You can lock in your auto exposure and then reframe your image after telling the camera, this is where I want that 18% gray to be metered for. This is the most important part of the image. Um, so you understand what metering does. Uh, active D lighting, this is like dynamic lighting. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Very similar to HDR. Uh, you have vibration reduction, that's your stabilization, uh, which is built into this camera. You would only want to turn this off if you are taking pictures on a tripod, because naturally the tripod is now doing the stabilizing. Um, so, uh, and if you're doing long exposure, I should probably clarify that. If you're just using the tripod just to take pictures of birds or something, you can probably keep it on. And then you have your focus mode, how the camera focuses. So you have AFS, single autofocus, which is for a subject that is still and not moving, where it's gonna focus and lock onto your subject. AFC, which is continuous autofocus, where it continually autofocuses as the subject moves in the frame. 
You have AFA, which is autofocus auto. The camera gets to decide whether it's something that's staying still or moving. And then you have manual focus, where you can use the ring on the lens to manually focus yourself. So it really depends on the subject that you're taking a picture of and what you'll have it set to. Naturally, I was taking pictures of parked cars. They're not going anywhere, so I wanted to lock on to those. And of course, our universal exit button is that shutter button halfway down, back to the shooting menu here. Um, we have a directional pad and our confirmation OK button, which also can uh, program our tracking. So you can tell it, this is my subject, now track it. And it'll kind of move that square around. Because it's just a dark background, it really doesn't know what I'm focusing on or where it's... It's like, wait, is it over here? Is it over here? I can't tell, it's dark, um, which I think is kind of funny, but just so you know, that is um, how that works. And then you can exit, there we go. Um, you can also exit with this button here. So these buttons here, the little magnifying glass with the plus and minus, if you had taken pictures and wanted to Say you took a group picture and wanted to make sure everybody had their eyes open. You could zoom into the picture, move around, move around, make sure that... Mm, sorry guys, my light went out in the middle of trying to explain this to you. So I am trying to make best with the way I can because for some reason it just will not power on now. I need to find a replacement light. Okay. Um, but you could move around and see who's blinking, that type of thing. It just allows you to see more detail and then back up, of course. We have already gone over our playback button. Now we'll go ahead and get into our menu here. So if we go all the way up to the top here, you can see we have different tabs. The different tabs are going to be for different menus. So the first tab here is our playback menu. This is going to allow us to change settings for pictures that we've already taken. So you can delete, you can create a playback folder, um, you can do playback display options, picture review, if you would like that turned on or off, uh, like so after you take a picture it would automatically show up on the screen. Rotate tall so if you you know turn your camera to do a portrait it would rotate those pictures automatically for you. You can do a slideshow, rate your pictures, all of that. The next tab down is going to be your photo shooting menu. You can reset your photo shooting menu if you find that your camera is doing something funny. Maybe you're playing with your menu and now it's doing something funky and you don't know how to change it back. You can reset that menu there and hopefully that'll help. A storage folder. You can file uh, name your files. Choose your image area. That's always really going to be DX. Um, but you can... Uh, go and crop in as well uh, in case you wanted a one by one ratio specifically for Instagram that type of thing um, or 16 by 9 for a more cinematic look you know it really is up to you uh, you have whoops go back you have image quality so again raw or JPEG and then image size would refer just to JPEG and you always want that in large if you're doing JPEG images uh, raw recording I choose the larger, the 14-bit. Uh, ISO sensitivity settings. This is what I was referring to earlier about the ISO button by setting a limit between 100 and 6400. That way it doesn't go up to super high numbers on its own and it gives you the freedom to start learning more on the social, or not social, it keeps you more on the side of learning and perfecting shutter speed and aperture before really getting into the ISO aspect. We have white balance, same as your quick menu here, um, same as the set picture control, uh, manage picture control, which is, you know, just changing those options. Color space always is R sRGB, especially if you're printing. Active view lighting, we already went over that in the quick menu there. Long exposure noise reduction. If you're taking pictures in RAW, I would turn this off personally. That's a personal preference. It just allows you to keep going without it uh, taking the time to go through and um, change any noise options if you're doing long exposures. High ISO noise reduction, I'd keep that on normal. Vignette control, same. 
diffraction compensation. Uh, I would definitely turn that on. It helps um, adjust if you're like taking pictures up at buildings um, to um, try and correct any like a natural curving when it comes to the lens. Auto distortion control. You have flicker reduction shooting, which is gonna be more so in a sense where you're doing video. So I'm, I'm really interested on um, why this is in the photography one. You know, uh, although I guess it is possible to capture flicker in photos. So it's interesting that that would be an option here. You have your metering, which we went over in your quick menu. Flash control, again, you have to have a flash in order to change those options. Your release mode or your drive mode right up here. Your focus mode also in your quick menu as well as your autofocus area mode where you wanna focus, vibration reduction, also in your quick menu. As you can see, there's a lot of repetition from what's in the menu and then what you would do in your quick menu. And you may think, Heather, you're going a little bit too fast to the menu. And I'm really just wanting to cover the most important aspects because realistically with this quick menu, you shouldn't ever have to go into your menu menu. Um, and then things like metering, your manual modes, your autofocus modes, I do have videos separate from this going over those in more detail. And then if you did want to know things such as auto bracketing and the HDR and the interval timer shooting um, in more detail, I do plan on doing videos going completely just through the menu options and going over those in detail of what they do and what you would use them for in the future. So keep an eye out for that video there. But this is really just a video to help you get started. Uh, but it does have interval timer shooting as well as time lapse video, which is really cool. It's built in. A fo focus shift shooting, really cool, as well as silent photography. Now, if you do silent photography, keep in mind that some settings may be turned off, like your continuous mode. You won't be able to do that, as well as no flash, um, because it's getting into this very covert mode, so keep that in mind. Now we'll go to the next tab here, which you'll actually find that the movie tab you know, like when you're doing video, is gonna be very similar to the photography tab. It's just more bent on video. So you have, again, your file naming. Instead of raw and JPEG, now you have your frame size, frame rate. So if you wanted 1080p or if you wanted 4K, you have uh, video quality, so you always wanna do high. Your video file type, white balance, set picture control, metering, all of that is gonna be the same. It's just specifically for video when you're in that video mode. So I'm not gonna really go over that in too much detail considering it's a lot of the repetition that we're seeing. This is the menu that you wanna focus on. This is your custom settings menu. So when we go over here, it is so easy to get lost in this menu, unfortunately. So you have your autofocus, metering and exposure, timers and autofocus um, or auto exposure lock, your shooting and display, bracketing and flash, controls where you would control or change your function buttons and change your options on your uh, quick menu, video. So even more video settings. So these are all very custom settings to where you go, okay, I want it to be set up this way. And chances are you're probably not gonna find yourself in this menu again too, too much, but you have it all set up. So it all just kind of flows into the next once you hit okay on that first one. I'll, a lot of these, like I said before, you're really not going to play with. So you have autofocus continuous priority selection. Uh, you can have that as your shutter. So basically you want to take the picture no matter what, or do you want it to focus in no matter what? And same thing for the autofocus um, single. Do you want to focus first or just take the picture? Focus tracking with lock on, that's your okay button. Focus points used, so you can use more or less depending on how specific you wanna be store points by orientation, you probably keep that off. 
autofocus activation, definitely want to have that on. Uh, limit autofocus area mode selection, wouldn't worry too much about that. Focus point wrap around. Uh, that one I'm going to go over in more detail in the menu walkthrough. It's not really necessary to know at the moment. Focus point, focus point options. So let's see here. You have manual focus point mode, dynamic area mode. Like there's so much in these Nikon menus that are just like very certain user specific. Don't feel that you have to know all of these, especially just getting started. Low light autofocus, definitely have that turned on. Easy exposure compensation. You can have that on. It can be reset. It's just going to try and adjust it for you. I like to have more control over my photos, so that's just me. Center weighted area, fine tune. Uh, you have shutter release button auto exposure lock. Uh, so if you didn't want to use the auto exposure lock here and rather push your shutter button halfway down, you can do that. The self timer, power off to delay. So if you want it to delay when you're turning the camera off, you can do so. So the, these ones are going to be your shooting and display. So you have um, like how low you want your low continuous mode to be maximum shot per burst. So it'll stop at 100 unless the card is not capable of doing so. Uh, your exposure delay mode, shutter type. So automatic, you can do electronic, mechanical. Auto is really good to just start in. Um, you have file number sequence as long as, you know, it'll just keep the count going instead of resetting. I definitely recommend just keeping it on that, not resetting it. Um, apply setting to live mode. Yes, you definitely want to turn that on. Uh, framing grid display. It's up to you if that helps straighten your photos or your composition. Um, but you could put a grid on your screen in order to help you out. Focus peaking. Definitely recommend having this turned on. Standard would probably do it and then you can pick your color red yellow blue or white and it'll actually show you when you're in manual focus mode what areas of your photo are in focus so it's pretty cool you have uh so these are all of your flash settings again we won't really go over those because you don't have a flash to start with let's not worry about it uh, you have bracketing or, or i'm sorry we have customization so you can customize your quick menu you can customize your controls for shooting, controls for playback, uh, customize command dial so that's your user modes, uh, release button to use dial, that's interesting. You have reverse indicators, so if you didn't like the direction for minus versus plus, you can switch those. Um, and then you can also customize all these buttons in the video mode as well, same thing. Then you have your wrench. This is going to be settings like your time and date and formatting your memory card. I go over this for every walkthrough that I go through because a lot of people don't realize what this does. Now formatting your memory card will permanently delete, well permanently, I'm going to use my quotes here, permanently delete um, all pictures and data off of your card. Yes, there are programs that may be able to retrieve those if you accidentally format your, your card, but it is not a guarantee. You cannot always retrieve your pictures back, um, which I've seen it happen. Um, the reason you would want to format your card because you're like, why would I want to do that? That sounds devastating is if you use your cards over and over again, like I do, because I have about nine of them that I put on rotation, you would want to format your card as soon as you know that everything is backed up to your computer, to a iCloud source, to, to an external hard drive, as long as it's off the card and you know it's safe and you wanna reuse your card, you'll format it because it does delete all that data so you can use it again. It keeps the card healthier and it keeps it lasting much longer versus if you just did the 
trash can button and deleted all of the pictures all the time, it doesn't permanently delete the data with the trash can button and allows it to be overwritten. When you overwrite a picture over and over and over and over again, it eventually corrupts the card. So it's a matter of time before the card just starts having issues, whether it corrupts it, locks you out, you know, you start seeing pictures being eaten away or pictures, certain pictures don't show up. It's a possibility that the card needed to be formatted or has not been formatted before. Um, here you can save user settings, reset user settings, change the language, time zone and date, monitor brightness, monitor color balance, record lamp brightness. So there's a little, um, light up front to indicate that you are recording information display um, autofocus fine tuning options so this is really a lot of the fine tuning stuff non cpu lens data so if you were to say to try and put a manual lens on this uh, like an old film lens safe focus position or even for a uh, telescope too totally forgot to mention that a safe focus position I, I probably wouldn't have it on there necessarily unless you're taking pictures of like astrophotography or something like that where you need focus to remain the same um, and you're using a automatic lens. You have pixel mapping, image comment, copyright information, beep options if you want to turn the beep on or off, touch control, self-portrait mode where you can flip this screen around do self-portrait, HDMI settings, airplane mode, um, which will help, it'll turn off the Wi-Fi options for this camera. It'll also help save battery as well. Connect to smart device, so connect to SnapBridge to an iPad or a phone. Connect to computer. Wireless remote options, so that'd be the MLL7 model if you wanted to use a wireless remote that wasn't your phone. You have USB power delivery, energy saving, a slot empty release lock. Uh, so you can, if your slot is empty for the SD card, it'll lock it and go, hey, remember, I, I need an SD card um, to remember to put one in there. Save load menu settings, reset all settings, and then you can check your firmware as well to see if it needs an update. The next tab here is going to be your retouch menu. I can't access this at the moment because I don't have a card in there with pictures, but essentially allows you to do minor editing inside the camera. I've never been a fan of doing this personally because I'd rather use it on my computer, a much larger screen than a three inch one, but you can trim, you can resize, you can do red eye correction, straighten, distortion control, all sorts of stuff in the camera itself. It's pretty incredible. And then we have our My Menu tab. The My Menu tab, as you can see through all of the options we just went through, by the way, this is touchscreen. There are a lot of options. And as we have established, not all options are for every single person owning this camera. So say you want to save the most important options like formatting your SD card and maybe some of the video options or customization options. Um, and you want immediate access to those without having to dig for them in all of these other tabs. You can go to the My Menu tab and add your most important options. So all you have to do is go to that check mark tab for your My Menu and it'll be right there for you waiting, which is really cool customization tool. Um, but other than that, that pretty much sums up the Nikon Z30. Now, if you guys have questions before I bring out the, the Nikon full menu walkthrough of the Nikon cameras, please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about anything that I went over. If I didn't go over it in enough detail for you, um, if I, you know, miss something and you have questions, or maybe you want to see a lens comparison on their, on the mirrorless cameras, uh, in comparison to like a DSLR lens, happy to do more of those. If you want to give me specifics, um, if you haven't seen a specific video that you think that, um, I would be good at teaching that's photography based, let me know. I'll add it to my list and 
keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.